Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about this really small galaxy that you see on the screen with the Milky Way right there in the background. And in this video we're going to be talking about something new that was discovered by the scientists in regards to the Milky Way itself and how this tiny galaxy known as Sagittarius Dwarf seems to influence the creation in the Milky Way. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Mat. When it comes to galaxies, for the most part, what we see, the visual components of the galaxies, these are obviously stars. And the creation of the stars, for the most part, is still kind of being investigated even today. Now we know that in our own galaxy, the Milky Way, currently there is roughly around one and a half masses of the Sun being used to generate new stars. Now, if you were to kind of try to calculate the age of the galaxy and then multiply this by the number of stars per year, you would not actually get enough. There would only be about 10 to maybe 15 billion stars created. But we know that our galaxy is way, way, way bigger. There are a lot more stars here, possibly up to 400 billion stars, suggesting that something major must have happened to create most of them. And so, by looking around the night skies, scientists have identified several cases of what's known as starburst galaxies. These other galaxies out there, where stars are being generated really fast and create these extremely beautiful and very bright environments where basically everything is being generated all at once, suggesting that this is exactly how Milky Way must have created its stars as well. At the same time, even though we kind of see these starbursts happening everywhere, we're not entirely sure how they start. But we've always believed that most of these starbursts begin with some sort of a major collision between a larger galaxy and possibly a smaller dwarf galaxy. And this does seem to be um, a case for many of the galaxies we've discovered so far. A lot of them seem to be going through the merger between two galaxies. But not always. At the same time, when the beautiful Gaia telescope that you see right here started to look around and trace very specific motions of nearby stars, and essentially creating an extremely detailed map of nearby stars, up to about 2 billion stars actually, we were able to then also identify some of the age groups and connect them all together. And today, based on this observation, we know that there were at least three major times when these stars were generated in the last 6 billion years. There was a major stage right here, this is when starburst occurred, and this is very likely when the Sun was born as well, another one about 2 billion years ago, and then another one somewhere around 500 million years ago. All three stages were so-called starburst stages, when the vast majority of stars were generated, during which the Milky Way probably looked something like this for at least some time. And it seems to have happened everywhere in the galaxy, not just in the middle, for example, if this was related to some kind of a black hole activity. So because this was an entire galaxy doing this, something else must have occurred for all of the starbursts to kind of be initiated across the entire galaxy. And so we've always had some ideas here and there, and also a lot of different explanations and theories on what could have started these starburst events, but nothing really concrete so far. Until, I guess, this paper that will be published relatively soon, and you can also find in the description below. And the paper itself is basically focusing on something entirely different. Not really on a galactic collision as much, but on the galactic interaction. And more specifically, on the interaction between Milky Way and this galaxy right here, known as Dwarf Sagittarius. Now, you may have never heard of this galaxy before, and honestly, I wouldn't really blame you because we didn't really know much about it. Located in the so-called local group of galaxies, which basically includes our neighbors, the Triangulum and the Andromeda galaxies, it wasn't really until recently that we were finally able to identify it as an actual galaxy out there, and not just any kind of galaxy, a relatively massive, although difficult to see galaxy. You can see that it's somewhere right here in this image, and one of the best known members of this galaxy is actually this right here. This is a globular cluster known as M54 or Messier 54, which is one of the more well-known globular clusters and is also very likely the core of this galaxy. Basically, this is probably where the central black hole for this galaxy is located as well. But because this galaxy is really massive, yet doesn't really have that many stars, it only suggests one thing it has a lot of dark matter hiding on the inside. 
And we know that uh, in the last few million years, it also seems to have influenced the shape of Milky Way as well because of its unusual mass. Today, we believe that some of the ripples and some of the actual um, warps around the Milky Way were very likely caused by the interactions between the Milky Way and Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy, and more specifically because of the way it orbits around the Milky Way in the polar region of the galaxy. In other words, it doesn't orbit along the disk, it seems to actually pass through the disk once in a while. But what does any of this have to do with the starbursts? Well, it seems that when the scientists behind the study looked at the orbital parameters and orbital passages of Sagittarius Dwarf around the Milky Way, and then compared them to the starburst activities in the Milky Way, they seem to have found an exact correlation. And more specifically, the direct correlation between the closest approach of Dwarf Sagittarius A to the Milky Way and the sudden formation of stars in our galaxy, which happened at least three times right here. And also, what's interesting is that they discovered that there's another fourth time happening right now, and it began about 70 million years ago. Which of course corresponds to the closest approach of Sagittarius Dwarf a Galaxy once again. In other words, if we were to try to emulate all of this, it would probably look something like this. Here we have a very simple model of Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy passing through a simple model of the Milky Way, and as it does so, it's going to initiate the uh, so-called starburst activity, although we're not going to be able to create this in this particular simulation. But basically, every time it passes close to the Milky Way, that's when the scientists behind this paper believe the starburst activity begins, with the most recent one having begun approximately 70 million years ago. Which is of course an excellent way for us to explain why the Milky Way galaxy had these specific, very unique starburst events that did not really correlate with any galactic collisions. So in other words, instead of swallowing a galaxy, it's very likely that the Milky Way had its starburst activities begin every time when the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy approached closer to its central disk. And notice here that after a few billion years of the simulation running, we're also going to form these unusual um, formations, almost like a ring-like shape or a star ring shape that you can kind of see right here. It's very, very difficult to see them, but the thing is, we've detected quite a lot of these as well. These are called stellar streams, and we've been finding more and more of these around the Milky Way in the last 10 years or so. So this is also one of the more recent discoveries, along with, of course, Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. Now, if I run the simulation long enough, eventually what's going to be left behind, apart from the stellar streams, is obviously going to be a relatively small core of the original galaxy, with something really small resembling a globular cluster similar to the one I showed you previously. And in the middle of this globular cluster is going to be a relatively massive central black hole. So today, a lot of scientists do believe that Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy probably has one of the larger central black holes orbiting around the Milky Way, along with a lot of dark matter, of course, which is why it has so much effect on the Milky Way. And it also seems to be one of the bigger influencers when it comes to the galactic evolution of the Milky Way itself, something that we didn't really expect from such a small and relatively difficult to see galaxy. Now, this is of course something we need to confirm first, but it does seem like this galaxy has a lot of influence on the Milky Way, a lot more than we originally expected. So I'm pretty sure that some of the future studies will be focusing on this even more, mostly because this is quite an interesting, quite a mysterious object. We obviously have no idea what it looked like before, but it was probably a lot more massive and a lot more beautiful than it is today. And it's also very likely that most of its stars were actually absorbed by the Milky Way, and a lot of its mass is now part of our galaxy as well. But this also means that some of the stars in the Milky Way probably came from here, and finding them would be really interesting as well. Now, unfortunately, that's kind of all we learned from the study, but nevertheless, it's a pretty incredible discovery, and definitely something that needs to be confirmed as soon as possible, mostly because it would mean that our own Milky Way galaxy possibly did not have exactly the same evolution as some of the other galaxies. It has experienced galactic collisions and probably had some of the stars created that way, but this study seems to suggest that most of the stars in the galaxy were probably created as a result of an interaction between Milky Way and a much smaller dwarf galaxy, which is not something we expected to find. And this of course raises a lot of other questions, like for example, what about other galaxies that we have orbiting around us? What was their influence on the Milky Way? This is definitely something that needs to be investigated, and something that will probably create a lot of interesting studies in the next few years. But until we discover more, that's kind of it. Thank you for watching, check out the study in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting this channel with Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. 
Alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can find in the description below as well. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.